Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel and this is Scott and I have to say it's raining and thundering outside so after Hurricane Barrel I'm just a tad bit paranoid about losing power and electricity. So of course I hike the AC way down to get it nice and cool and I'm crossing my fingers. So today I want to talk about a couple of things. We're going to look at taking a Ubiquiti Unify router and using it in conjunction with a WireGuard connection over to a Nord VPN public VPN server. So we're going to create a virtual network, otherwise known as a VLAN, on our Unify router. And Unify routers provide the capability to create a VPN client that can act as a default gateway for the VLAN that we're going to create. And the VPN client will be to a NordVPN server of our choosing. And we can also create a Wi-Fi SSID for that same VLAN, but that's completely optional. And any system that connects to the new VLAN, either wired or wireless, will be connected to the NordVPN server connection. So what exactly are the steps that we're going to do? Well, first of all, we're going to log into the Nord account at mynordaccount.com and we're going to go down to a section called their manual configuration and create an access token for manual configuration. And I suppose it was about six to nine months ago that Nord stopped um, using your regular username and password for anything but their standard app or logging into their website. And if you wanted to do a manual open VPN connection or a WireGuard connection, they considered that to be a manual configuration. And so on their website, um, you had to obtain what they called an access token. Essentially, it's an API in order to be able to uh, manually configure your own connection without their software. And that's what we're going to do today. And then we're going to create a VLAN on your Unify router, as I mentioned earlier. And then we're going to get a, you get your private key using that access token. So we're going to get a private key that's going to be part of what's going to go into the WireGuard configuration file. And then we're going to connect to the desired Nord, Nord VPN server via OpenVPN or Nord links, or for that matter, you can use the standard uh, Nord application to make a VPN connection. So we're gonna be making that VPN connection to the VPN that you want to use, the server you want to use. And then we're going to use that connection to get the server address and the public key for that current connection to wherever it happens to be in the world. And then we're going to create a WireGuard configuration file using that information. And we're going to create a WireGuard VPN client on the Unify router using that configuration file. And on the Unify router, we're going to define the default gateway for the VLAN to be that VPN client. And optionally, we are going to define a Wi-Fi SSID for the VLAN. And part of the reason for that is I'm thinking of things like set-top boxes, maybe things like uh, Fire TV sticks or Roku's where maybe you don't want to run a VPN client on that device, but you want to be able to geolocate that device to another part of the world to watch content from that part of the world. Well, now all of a sudden you can just join this Wi-Fi network in order to accomplish that. So let's go off and see what we need to do to accomplish this. In order to create a WireGuard configuration file that we can use with our Unify router, we want to sign on to the Nord account. And that's going to be at my.nordaccount.com forward slash dashboard forward slash NordVPN forward slash manual dash configuration, which will be in the show notes. Once you get over there, you want to go ahead and generate yourself an access token. 
and I usually like to generate one that doesn't expire and so I'm going to go ahead and click generate token. I'll go ahead and say copy and close and then I'm going to go down to my uh, command prompt. At my command prompt I'm going to issue this curl command and the token that we just got by going onto the NordVPN website is this number that you see right here. This command will generate the private key. Now that we end up with a copy of that private key, we want to go ahead and copy that. So I'll go ahead and do a right click and copy. And then now we go over and build the configuration file. So here's my template for the configuration file. And one of the first things I want to do is go down to where it says private key from the curl command. And I'm going to go ahead and paste in that private key that we just got. If you don't have WireGuard installed on your server, you want to do a sudo apt install WireGuard. At this point, it's noteworthy to point out that I've connected to a NordVPN server. And here I'm at the website where dash m dash i dot co and that is the where am i website and it says that i am in london united kingdom and if we scroll down you can clearly see that my current location is right in the middle of the thames river so this means that at this point you should be connected to a wire guard server in order to execute the following steps and then i can do a sudo wg show and keep in mind i'm connected to the wire guard connection that i'm going to want to use and so this can give me information about that connection and it says I'm connected to an interface called nord-uk.w-wg and that's simply because that's what I actually called it. If you use the NordVPN program then your connection interface name is probably Nordlinks. The next piece of information we want is the public key and the command to get that would be wg show and then since our link is not called or our connection is not called Nordlinks, it's called Nord-UK-WG, simply because that's what I called it. Once I do this command, and I'll have to put a sudo before this, it should tell me what that public key is. So I wanna make a copy of this public key, and notice that that public key is the same as this one up here. So I didn't really need to issue that particular command. So I want to copy that public key and I want to go back to our configuration file and where it says public key up here and gives that command that I just gave, I'm going to paste in the public key. The next thing we're going to need up here is something called the listen port. And so we can go ahead and get that by doing a WG and show listen port. But here you can see that the listening port is 39338. So I'll just go ahead and type in 39338. And we've got that piece of information. So now we have the listen port, the public key, the private key, the address which never changes from 10.5.0.2 uh, with the 32 subnet mask and the reason for that is because that's a requirement that NordVPN has. You can change your DNS. I have Cloudflare listed here as my DNS and the next thing that we want to do is we want to go get the pre-shared keys which is the public key for the peer connection. So we'll go ahead and enter that command, but this time, once again, I got to make sure and change Nordlinks to the name of my connection, which happens to be Nord-UK-WG. Yours will differ, and it lists the pre-shared key if I had put in the sudo command. So I go ahead and do a sudo in the same command, and it says unable to access the device 
and that's because I made an error there. You'll notice that that's UKWG and not WK. And now we have that key. So we make a copy of this and then we go ahead and go back to the configuration file and we go up here to where it says public key which is really the pre-shared keys in this case and we go ahead and paste that in. The next line says allowed IPs which basically says route everything over the wire guard and then it has the endpoint. So the endpoint is going to be the address of the server that we are connecting to. And the address of that server is simply going to be the address of the server at Nord, and that is our endpoint. So we go ahead and copy that, and we go ahead and put that in here. I did not copy the port because the port will be 51820. So we go ahead and paste that in here, making sure not to eliminate that colon. And then we have a persistent keep alive at 60 and a forced handshake of five that keeps our connection alive. At this point, I can go ahead and save the file and exit the editor. Now I've returned to my web browser and if I repaint my web screen here for the where am I, you'll notice that now it turns out that apparently I'm inside of another body of water, but this time I'm down in Houston. I don't know what it is, but apparently this program wants to take me for a swim. I know it's hard to appreciate this, but you can't believe how many errors you end up with in a live recording. So at this point, we want to head over to the Unify screen, go down to the gear, we're going to go over to where it says uh, VPN, go to VPN client. We're going to create a WireGuard VPN client. I'm going to go ahead and call this Nord-VPN-London just because that's the connection. And I'll go ahead and do an upload and the file name is going to be Nord-UK-WG dash udm.conf and when I put that in there it goes ahead and loads everything that we put in and I go ahead and do and apply changes so at this point we have a VPN but we do not have a network to use that VPN client with so I go over and click on networks and I had previously had a NordVPN network and I'll go in here and show this for you. I just picked a unique um, VLAN ID, which was VLAN 5. I told it to isolate a network and then allow internet access, obviously, since uh, the VPN needs to go out to the internet. And then the next step that I have is I want to go down to routing. And in routing, I want to say that I want to uh, create a routing rule, and we're just going to call this Nord dash VPN dash London since it's really uh, for that VPN and I'll say route all traffic from what network from the Nord VPN network and then what do you want to route to which interface and I want to route to the interface of the VPN client which is Nord VPN London so basically what this does is it makes anything on this network called NordVPN, which is VLAN 5, it uses its default route as that VPN client. So I go ahead and say add entry, and I now have a NordVPN London entry. Now that we have the routing set up, let's go ahead and go back to the VPN section and go under VPN client. And the green light is a good thing because it means that we're currently connected and it says it's connected and it will also give us upload and download traffic statistics. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run over here to a terminal and of course I can do an if config on this particular um, desktop and this is actually a virtual machine desktop 
and this virtual machine desktop is connected to 192.168.5.219 which is my address range for my VLAN 5. So now if I go up here to the Brave browser and I do a where am I and I scroll down you can see that I am in fact located in London. So anything that would connect to this network would be in London. So another thing that we want to do is let's say we want to add wireless to this. We can go back here over to Wi-Fi and say create me a new Wi-Fi connection. And I'll just call this thing Nord-VPN. And that'll be my SSID. And I can just give it something like... Uh, some kind of password here and that's just uh, an SSID password okay I guess they want more characters uh, and then um, I'll set it up to be manual and if we go down here a little bit further we should be able to specify or maybe it's further up yeah there we go can specify what network and the network I want to connect this wireless uh, SSID to is the NordVPN network. And so then I can go ahead and say add Wi-Fi network. So now if I connect wirelessly to this, let's say that I was going to connect something like a uh, Fire TV stick or a smart TV or a Roku, then when they connect to this NordVPN SSID, uh, they would be connected through that VPN, uh, just like this virtual machine is here. And so, uh, likewise, uh, if I came down here and I did something like a uh, curl to if config dot me, I can see the current address that their server in London gave me when I connected and that address there is not at all the address of my um, WAN connection it is the address of that VPN server. So in summary the advantage of using a VPN client definition on your Unify router is that there is no requirement for VPN clients to be loaded and configured on every computer that you want to connect to a VPN connection. And we created a manual access token on the NordVPN website. We obtained your private key using the access token. We obtained the public key from your current WireGuard connection. And we use the private key and the public key to create a NordVPN configuration file, which we uploaded to the Unify router when creating the VPN client. And finally, we routed the VLAN traffic to the VPN client using the client as the default gateway for that network. Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like to the channel. And don't forget to hit that notification bell and we'll see you next time.